scenario is that the technology that is being used at Google is quite different that you actually see in the outer world. Let's say you're working in Google Cloud and you would like to see some code base from Google Pay. You can actually see that because it's a monorepo. Now, interestingly, because it's a monorepo and there is a humongous amount of code base present, you do not clone this code on your local machine. Now, let's say in Google, if you're working on some backend technologies, then most of the backend technologies that you will see are powered by languages like C++, Java, Python, and Go. Major time, majority of the time, these will be the four programming languages that you're going to work with. For web frontends, majority of the time, you will see some places, some plain JavaScript being used or Angular as a framework being used. A lot of team use Angular with JavaScript, but a lot of team also use Angular with Dart. Angular gives a very good support to do things with Dart on top of it. So a lot of team do the combination of Angular and Dart as well. And this is pretty much common nowadays uh, because uh, Dart gives a lot of interesting support, which is complemented by Angular. So if you are actually willing to make a career in the tech industry, a lot of times you might be having a question in your mind that what do actually the engineers in this big tech companies, all the fan companies, including Google, Amazon, Microsoft, in all of these companies, what the engineers actually do? What are the set of technologies they work on? How actually the day to day life looks like and so on and so forth. If you also have these kind of questions, then don't worry. In this particular video, we are going to have a very fun and a candid discussion specific to Google that let's say if you start working as a software engineer at Google, how's the work actually like, right? We are not going to talk about any business details or something, but specifically with respect to software engineers, what is the tech stack that Google generally follows, right? What kind of technologies they work on? What's the overall engineering culture? What actually motivates all the engineers to make so great products altogether and so on and so forth. Keep one thing in mind. Whatever things I'm going to talk about, all of this information is already available on the internet. If you are good with Googling, you might be able to find more details on top of it. So I would highly recommend you guys that you watch the video till the end and maybe try to actually scroll through all of these technologies and maybe try to read about them if you also want to see how actually Googlers work. So without any further ado, let's just start. But if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I would highly recommend you guys to do subscribe to the channel because we are going to put some really awesome content like this, which is going to be related to tech industry, your career, so on and so forth. So let's just start. So before moving forward in the video, I have an important announcement for you. So if you're somebody who is actually willing to learn advanced backend technologies, then this is going to be the right platform for you. So at AlgoCamp, we have launched our new flagship Lambda 4.0 Advanced Live Backend Development Batch in which you are going to learn advanced backend technologies including Fastify, ExpressJS, AWS, Mongo, DynamoDB and whatnot. This is going to be a power packed course in which we are going to take you from the very scratch, very basics of backend technologies to the very advanced level by building a lot of interesting projects. We are going to build projects like Code Sandbox Clone. We are going to build streaming app, which, which will include recorded movie streaming plus live streaming as well. We are going to make applications like Booking.com backend, which is going to help you understand transactional capabilities, integrations of payment gateways, and many more. All the important projects that we are going to cover in the course is going to be listed here. And this is going to be an absolute live course where we are going to take live classes Right, And in these live classes, we are going to do hands-on coding experience to learn all the important advanced backend technologies. You already know that backend is something that every important application needs and you can actually excel your software engineering career with these backend tech in the Node.js stack. So what are you waiting for? All the important links, the complete syllabus, curriculum, all the details of the course is present in the description section below. You can use the coupon code coming up here to get maximum discount off on the current price. I'm really excited for the course. I hope you guys are too. And now let's get back to the video. If let's say you join as a software engineer at Google, then when you join, you actually go through a three week bootcamp. During this bootcamp, there will be a lot of things taught to you around the product aspirations, the mission of Google, so on and so forth. But overall, in these three weeks, you will also go through the basic tech stack of Google. Now, why it is important? Because you might be having a feeling that, okay, Google actually hires through so rigorous process, right? Then why they actually want their engineers to go through a bootcamp? The scenario is that the technology that is being used at Google is quite different that you actually see in the outer world. 
okay for example let me start with the version control system so most of the time when you learn software engineering you start your uh, in the coding world development world you actually go through the version control system as git and the repository platform more or less as github or bitbucket something like this now internally in google engineers do not use git okay why is that because if you see the volume of code that is being committed and pushed in the overall google repositories is significantly high and they wanted to have an in-house solution that is able to actually cater this much amount of scale and apart from that that can be customized based on the google's needs so google has their internal version control system which they specifically call as piper okay you can read more about piper on the internet there is a dedicated research paper which talks about a lot of performance improvement that piper actually brings but this is kind of like the first difference that you see that the version control system is a bit different apart from that most of the time when you start working in a software development company most of the time what happens is that whatever project you have to work on you try to specifically clone that project on your local machine and work on that but that's not how things work in google so i would say majority like 70 to 80% of the google's code base is a mono repo so that that means that at any point of time if you want to actually take a look at a code base which is actually not from your team you can do that for example let's say you are working in google cloud and you would like to see some code base from google pay you can actually see that because it's a mono repo now interestingly because it's a mono repo and there is a humongous amount of code base present you do not clone this code on your local machine all of the coding happens actually on cloud machines so there are optimized very performant cloud machines that actually exist on which all of this mono repo technically is present and the piper the version control system that i told you about is already integrated to these cloud machines most of the time what google engineers actually do is they try to log into that particular uh, cloud machine from their core laptop and then do all of the coding on that and in order to facilitate this coding because now you are not cloning anything altogether there are dedicated integrated development environments or you can say ides that is again in house developed by google so they have their own in house developed integrated development environment or you can say ides okay so these ides actually most of the time run on browsers and they try to make a connection to the cloud machines and people actually directly kind of like code on the browser so more or less the configuration and the performance of your local machine is not going to actually hamper anything regarding your developer productivity and to be very honest this practice is is actually used in a lot of big tech companies because your local machine can become old or maybe might not stay as performant at as it is as of now as like a new machine but these cloud machines are very performant they have very good network access very good internet bandwidth they are on a secure network so it makes sense to actually use these cloud machines and access these cloud machines from your local machine this is kind of like a very different scenario when somebody joins these companies like google microsoft amazon because most of the time you have a habit that you let's say bootstrap a new project from your local machine work on your local machine and so on and so forth even in startups it's very common but that's not how these big tech companies work right and the moment you are into the overall environment you will see that you are able to see most of the code base altogether some of the code base also exists separately for example android's code, code base as far as i correctly remember exists separately also so this is the first interaction that you actually get that the version control system is slightly a bit different the commands the way you access the version control is a bit different it's not similar to git where you have a lot of branches and you make branches for every single feature that's not how it works the concept of branching is slightly a bit different specific to piper this concept of workspaces and everything that's again very much uh, specific to how things work at google and that's how your initial interaction with the code base will work now we're going to talk about what are the technologies that most of the google products and the google engineers actually work on now let's say in google if you are working on some backend technologies then most of the backend technologies that you will see are powered by languages like c++ java python and go major time majority of the time these will be the four programming languages that you are going to work with now you might be having a question that okay do we do they use very famous frameworks like spring boot and everything actually not google has their own internal frameworks that they have not completely open source so we are not going to also throw any light on top of that but there are these internal libraries very much optimized for use cases around google and the major four languages for the backend is this so let's see if you have worked with any of the major frameworks in these technologies you will feel very much comfortable in actually adapting 
to the libraries and frameworks developed by Google as well. So this was on the application framework level that what are the languages on the back end. If you see, let's say, if you are in the Android team or the iOS team, then again, similar kind of Android and iOS tech stacks exist. For example, some teams use the native Android um, languages like Kotlin and Java and the native uh, Android framework. Correspondingly, uh, Objective-C and Swift for iOS as well. Although there are indeed some teams which actually uses Flutter as well, which is Google's own in-house, I would say, cross-platform, um, I would say, application development framework. Now, the Flutter that you see open source is very close to what the internal Google Flutter is. But apart from that, on top of it, there are some internal libraries that empowers the internal Google Flutter. But if you have worked on Flutter altogether outside as well, then migrating to the internal Flutter is not going to be much of a challenge. On top of that, if you see Flutter is powered by the language Dart. Interestingly, for web frontends, majority of the time you will see some places, some plain JavaScript being used or Angular as a framework being used. A lot of team use Angular with JavaScript, but a lot of team also use Angular with Dart. Angular gives a very good support to do things with Dart on top of it. So a lot of team do the combination of Angular and Dart as well. And this is pretty much common nowadays uh, because uh, Dart gives a lot of interesting support, which is complemented by Angular. Now, this is again on the front end aspect of all of the things. Now, a lot of time what happens is that you have to do some kind of a database interactions and everything. So Google again has their own, I would say, in-house uh, database available. Some of these database research papers you can very easily find. For example, databases like Spanner exist, which is kind of like a new SQL available. There is Google Bigtable altogether. Google has a file system called as Colossus. A lot of interesting articles and research papers are available on top of this. One more interesting fact while working as a software engineer at Google would be that the major communication protocol that you will see that let's say if there are two microservices and these two microservices have to interact, then a lot of time, like 90 to 99% of the time, you will see gRPC being used. Again, gRPC has a lot of interesting benefits on top of REST. They use protocol buffers. The overall efficiency of the communication improves a lot. You can find a lot of interesting gRPC related talks. Even I have given a couple of gRPC related talks in a couple of conferences. So if you want to read about it, you can very easily find a lot of resources on top of gRPC. Now, apart from all of this, there are other tools available inside Google as well, which empowers a software engineer's day-to-day -day work. For example, you might have heard about Kubernetes. Now, internally, because Kubernetes was developed at Google, internally, you can say there is a project called as Google Bork, which is the actual inspiration of the open source Kubernetes altogether. This Bork is the cluster management system that goes on behind the scenes. If you see around the deployment uh, cycles, different teams follow different different type of deployment cycles and there are some a lot, a lot of internal tools that actually improves on top of it. If you see on the documentation front, Google actually uses Google Docs a lot. If you have to write any kind of design documentation, Google Docs is very good, very performant, has a lot of interesting extensions. So you can use Google Docs altogether. For any coding, um, I would say effort, as I already mentioned, Google has its own ID. So recently Google launched a project IDX, which was on kind of like an online code sandbox. Very similar ID exists in Google as well that they call as CIDR. Okay, so if you want to get a feeling of that, you can use the project IDX and you will get the exact same feeling of how exactly the code editor and the ID inside Google actually looks like. Now, different teams in Google follow different, different type of engineering culture. Some teams do use sprints, some teams do not have sprints, but there is one thing very common that in Google, the quality of code is going to be very high. Most of the time you will see teams following uh, test driven development or at least having a certain cutoff for the test that okay whatever code you're writing should be having more than 90% or 95% code coverage. This makes sure that the overall code that you are actually building is as robust as possible, properly tested and thro uh, throws close to no errors in production. Of course, there can still be errors because of something that was not initially thought of or there can be some corner cases. These errors and bugs do come up, but at least on the coding front, this is absolutely ensured that you have properly tested code. In code reviews as well, you are generally expected that more than one person actually reviews your code and technically there are some certain set of people who actually gets a language proficiency who has seen a lot of one specific language code and knows how to write clean code in that language so some reviews from those kind of people is also required for code reviews of course again there is an internal platform it's not like they use github they have their own internal platform right we are not going to talk about it because again it's a very similar tool to that of github so again the 
life cycle of software development is going to be similar that let's say you are first of all going to get some product requirements you are going to do some engineering design documentation on it you will do design reviews you will present your design doc then slowly and steadily you will divide your work into smaller chunks go forward raise the pull requests they call it something else internally but you are going to raise the pull request you are going to get reviews on top of those pull requests later you merge it and then slowly and steadily you start deploying it generally you try to do kind of like any ab testing that 1% of the users get the feature then 10% 50% and so on and you do proper analytics on top of it so these are some of the things that you will find uh, people at google actually using most of the time what your team does is going to highly highly impact or i would say influence what technologies you are going to use so i'll list down all the links all the technology docs all the research papers that i have talked about i will definitely recommend you guys to make sure that you go through all of these links read about the overall engineering culture of google these are some of the research paper that can help you to understand a lot of deep internal tech stuff that actually goes on behind the scenes in google that being said this is are going to be a wrap for this particular video if you have any corresponding suggestions do let me know in the comment section below i would be really happy to answer that just for um i would say the idea i was working with a google pay team where i was majorly involved with a flutter based front end of mobile app of google pay and the java based back end altogether but as i mentioned what tech stack you use is going to be dependent on your team altogether that being said let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to continue our discussion on tech and career till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off